Now, Melissa with New South Table. Today, it's all about buttermilk biscuits. Let's get started. Biscuits can be made a hundred different ways, but the basic ingredients include flour, milk, and some type of fat. Now, the type of flour you use can either be all-purpose flour or self-rising flour. But if you use all-purpose flour, you will need to include some type of leavening ingredient in there, whether it's baking powder or baking soda or whatever. If you use self-rising flour, you don't have to do that. As far as the milk that is used, again, it ranges from canned evaporated milk to what we call sweet milk in the South, which is, which is just plain milk, 1%, 2% or whole milk, whatever. Or you could use buttermilk. And that's my choice is I just like the tanginess that buttermilk provides the, to the flavor of the biscuit. As far as the fat, many Southerners have argued over whether it's better to have a biscuit made with butter or with shortening or with lard. Now, back in the day, people used lard in their biscuits in the South, a lot of folks, because that was something that was readily available. Lard is rendered pork fat, and so many farmers they had access to the pork fat, and that's what they used to create these wonderful biscuits. I remember growing up, and my mother taught me how to make biscuits when I was really young. She often used lard because it was something that was there. It was available. Um, she also used shortening, but most of the time it was, um, it was lard, and that's the way we made our biscuits. I make mine with both lard and shortening now. It just depends on what mood I'm in, really. Lard often creates a thinner biscuit. It doesn't rise quite as much as it does with shortening, um, but it still provides that fluffy texture. Butter, on the other hand, is something that gives you a biscuit that is flaky and oftentimes has layers to it. So for my recipe today, we're using shortening and buttermilk and self-rising flour. Now, as I said, my mama taught me how to make biscuits when I was really young. I was probably 10 or 11, I guess, when I learned how to make my first biscuit. And there is a technique involved in making biscuits. You absolutely cannot overwork the dough because I baked my first biscuits and I pulled them out of the oven and I was so excited that I was making my biscuits for the very first time, just like my mama taught me how to make them. And they were not edible. They were like rocks. I literally could take one and I threw it up against the wall and it bounced off the wall. It was tough. And it was because I had overworked the dough. And so I'm going to show you a technique today that will help you um, be mindful of how much you're actually working the dough so that it becomes a more tender biscuit and a fluffy biscuit. And I think everyone can make the perfect buttermilk biscuit with just a few simple steps. So, so let's head on into the kitchen and get started. Begin by measuring two cups of self-rising flour into a large mixing bowl. We will be using a fork throughout this process, so make sure you have one available. Add one half cup shortening to the bowl with the flour. Use the fork to break the shortening into large chunks and try to keep the large pieces covered with flour as much as possible. This is going to help get us started. Now 
Now scrape the excess shortening off the fork and go in with your hands. Just press the shortening through your fingers and try to get the shortening into smaller bite-sized pieces. Continue to do this until most of the shortening has been incorporated into the flour and the pieces are smaller, much like the size of peas. And by the way, it's okay to make a mess because we're making biscuits. Now add one half teaspoon of salt. This is optional. At this point, we're just checking the consistency here. We want most of that shortening incorporated into the flour into smaller pieces. That, that looks perfect. Now make a well in the center of the flour for the milk and pour about half the buttermilk into the center. Find your handy fork and stir gently. Notice the fork is kept primarily on the outer edge of the bowl as you slowly scrape the excess flour into the center. Be very gentle. Now we see we have quite a bit of flour left on the outer edges of the bowl, so add the rest of the milk and gently stir. Again, do your best to go along the outer edges of the bowl slowly to incorporate all the flour. Keeping that fork along the outer edges of the bowl will help prevent overworking the dough. Now scrape off the excess from the fork. The dough is very sticky and that is exactly what we want. Now do yourself a huge favor and use parchment paper. This is optional. You could use your countertop if you would like, but this allows us to have a much easier cleanup. Dump the dough on top of the flour. It's okay if there are bits left in the bowl. Don't worry about that. Now, make sure you flour your hands and gently pull the dough together. Continue to flour your hands. Just continue to keep flour on your hands. Putting the flour on your hands instead of on top of the dough will keep you from adding too much flour, creating a very dry biscuit. We're going to start with the folding method. So fold it in half and pat it down. Fold it in half again and pat it down. Keep the flour on the surface and on your hands. Fold it in half again and pat it down. Now just make an irregular circle 
It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be about one inch in thickness. The dough should be really, really soft. As far as what you will use to cut your biscuits, that's totally up to you. You can use a glass or an empty can. You can even use biscuit cutters. Just make sure you dust them before you cut the biscuits. That will keep them from sticking. Take the excess dough and pull it together. Try not to knead it too much here. We don't want to overwork it. Gently pull it together and pat it out. Pulling it together, patting it out. We should get a couple more biscuits here. Again, pull the excess dough together and pat it out. Very gently. We have enough for one more. And finally, the famous baby biscuit. Such fun for the little ones. Grease the pan you'll be baking the biscuits in. You can use shortening or butter and place the biscuits with the sides touching into the pan. Placing the biscuits close together will help them rise and it will help keep the moisture in the biscuits. And just patting them down and there you go perfect now look how easy it is to clean up the workspace you can thank me later take half the melted butter and brush over the top of the biscuits before baking. You'll save the other half of the butter and you'll use this after they come out of the oven. Bake at 450 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Look at these, aren't they gorgeous? We're not finished yet. Brush the other half of the butter on top of the hot biscuits because a biscuit is just not a biscuit without melted butter. Look how beautiful. And oh my goodness, they taste even better than they look. Golden, fluffy, absolutely delicious.